Okay, good. Yeah, so uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity uh, to talk about uh, our analysis, which is a search for a dark vector boson and a new scalar with the Atlas detector. So I will start first with my uh, uh, biography and then present our analysis, its context and objectives, and remind some component of the Atlas detector. The analysis overview in run one, the event selection in run one, the signal generation, the background estimates and uncertainties, and the result we got in run one. And then I will move uh, to run two, where I will also talk about the analysis overview, the event selection, the background estimates and uncertainties. And then the result we also got in run two before concluding. So uh, in this slide is like uh, where everything started, which is uh, my participation to the African School of Physics in 2012 in Ghana. So in this picture, for instance, on the uh, top left, you can recognize some spaces when you can see, for instance, Simon Connell, Christine, KTV here, and myself. And yeah, so, uh, after this, uh, uh, after the school, so I got a scholarship from University of Strasbourg in France, where I start a, a master degree in high energy physics. And um, after uh, this, this, this master degree, so I was selected to participate to the CERN summer student in 2014, uh, where I was working in LACB with Manchester team where I was uh, especially focusing on the alignment of the LICB Time Peaks Telescope. And I also participate to the data, data taking and uh, to the analysis of the detector performance. And then I start a master thesis internship in CMS with CEA team in Saclay, where I was uh, involved in the measurement of the W boson mass in the electron channel. And then in 2016, I start my PhD in Atlas with Johannesburg University and University of South Africa. And, and then uh, I finished my PhD and then I, I start uh, my current position, which is a postdoc at Brookhaven National Laboratory. So in these pictures on the top fan sense is uh, the summer student pictures in 2014. And the picture at the bottom is uh, when I submitted my thesis with my supervisors. And uh, during my PhD, I uh, perform uh, some works. So as you know, to be part of uh, Atlas Auto List, so you have to uh, perform uh, authorship task or qualification task that I did with the new small wheel. And I was mostly supporting the quality control assurance PCQA activities of the micro mega readout circuit boards. And I was also taking some regular shift. And I also developed a software tools to perform a statistical analysis of the measurement performed during the shift. And I also participate to, uh, to the international conference on neutrino and dark matter in Egypt. And I also, uh, I was also invited to give a seminar to John Hopkins University in USA. And these pictures on the top is uh, where I was, uh, taking some measurement in the in my qualification task and the picture at the bottom is uh, uh, in Egypt is about the conference in neutrino and dark matter. And I also uh, participate to the European School of High Energy Physics in Portugal and also to the Higgs and Dibozon Search Workshop in Naples to the International Workshop on Discovery Physics at LHC in Kruger also to the African Conference of Physics in Namibia, also to the Dark Interaction Workshop at Biennale. So it's the uh, picture at the bottom and the picture as a, at the top is uh, in Naples, the HDBS workshop. And I also participate to the South African Institute of Physics, SAIP, and to the annual interdisciplinary academy as University of South Africa. Okay, so I also did a bit of outreach. So I think you, maybe you already may heard about Physics Without Frontier, which is organized by ICTP. 
it works to inspire, train, and motivate physics, physicists and uh, mathematics university students worldwide to help build the next generation of scientists. So if you want to have more details on it, you can follow this link. So I was leading this project and its implementation in Senegal, my home country, with Kate Ibrahim Abba and Lili Askis. So we have visited like uh, four universities where we were giving lectures and we're also doing some hands-on uh, session. For instance, uh, this is some pictures from each universities, including my uh, my uh, uh, home university I, where I start my, 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 my study in, in Dakar. Okay, so uh, what I'm uh, currently uh, working on, so is mainly uh, our analysis, which is quite a huge analysis. And it has like uh, uh, four sub analysis inside or channels. For instance, uh, this table here, uh, the first column on, on this table is the different channels we are considering in this analysis. The first one is the high mass channel where we are looking for a Higgs which is decaying to xx to 4L. And here x is a Z dark or a, a particles. And the range of x is between 15 to 60 GeV. And the final states we are considering is four electrons, four muons, two electrons, two muons. We also are considering uh, what we call the X channel, where we are looking for a Higgs boson decaying to the standard model Z and X, where both of them decay to 2L. And here the X uh, range is from 15 GeV to 55 GeV, where we are considering four electrons, four muons, two electrons, two muons, and two muons, two electrons as final states. And then we have the low mass channel where we still are looking for a Higgs decaying to 4L via 2XX, but here X is only from one GeV to 15 GeV. And we are only considering the four muon channel. So the analysis, as I said, is, is quite good where we have like more than 20 members and each channel or each sub analysis has one PhD student or one postdoc producing result and one to three senior advisors. So I was designated as analysis contact and with Justin uh, as co-analysis, but now he left, he is replaced by Christian Weber, who is now uh, my co-contact analysis. And this is the head of the support note that you can find in this link where you can see all the people who are involved in this analysis and the institute. So, yeah, so is, yes. Yeah, I think maybe you should mention that uh, in the new this new iteration, we also have our colleagues from Morocco. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, so yeah, so we, now we are busy with the full support, uh, full, full run to analysis where it uh, involved like uh, some colleagues, as KTV said, from Morocco, Farida, and you know, and her students, Mohammed and uh, Zainab. And we also uh, closely still working with UNISA and uh, um, uh, UJ, Simon and Lero. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so this is also a bit of fun. So sometimes, you know, during conferences and schools, you can have some fun. So this is like during the European School of High Energy Physics where I was doing some crazy stuff, like some skydiving. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, our analysis. Okay, so as you know, so the standard models has some deficiencies in the sense that, you know, it has uh, many free parameters like uh, uh, matter, uh, antimatter paradox, the hierarchy problem, strong CP problems, no gravity, no dark energy, no dark matter. It uh, also can't explain the astrophysical observation of positron excesses. So that's why we need like uh, some new physics like beyond standard model physics. And in this analysis, we are using two benchmark model. So the first one is the two HDM plus S that you know uh, you can um, see from curtain paper here. And this model is actually predicts the decay of the Higgs boson to one or two scored a pseudo scale A. And A is decaying to mu mu 
and it's determined by Yukawa couplings of A to fermions. And the two Feynman diagrams uh, we are considering here is where the Higgs is decaying to a Z and A to four leptons, and where the Higgs is decaying to two A to four leptons. The second benchmark model we are using is uh, uh, the hidden Abelian Higgs model, which is still from uh, Curtin and from also Human. Human is also our colleague from Brookhaven National Lab. And these models introduce an additional U1 dark gauge symmetry mediated by a dark gauge boson Z dark, where Z dark can interact with the standard model through kinetic mixing parameter epsilon. And the dark Higgs mechanism could uh, spontaneously break the U1 dark gauge symmetry and introduce a mixing uh, parameter. And the Feynman diagrams are as follows. So the left one is a case where Higgs is decaying to a Z and a Z dark, which should decay to four leptons. And the right hand side is the one where the Higgs is decaying to two Z dark to four leptons. And uh, so this is uh, our region of interest. So that I uh, make um, made in box. So we are only considering the prompt Z dark one uh, for the case of Z dark, and for the case of A, we are considering this this uh, this region. And we uh, so yeah. So that's uh, what we are considering for this uh, two benchmark model. Okay, so this is a brief uh, reminder of uh, the Atlas de detector. So where you have like where we have the tracking system, which is uh, which enable to reconstruct the charge uh, charge particles trajectories, and then we have like a thin supercond uh, superconducting solenoid, which uh, you know uh, enable to compute particles impulsions. We have electromagnetic calorimeter to measure electromagnetic energy deposited by electrons and photons. We also have like the Mion system, which is uh, designed to identify and reconstruct Mion. The trigger system, you know, to choose, you know, uh, either to keep or not even, since we have like a lot of events. So sometimes it's better just to keep, you know, some interesting events. We also have like hadronic calorimeters to measure hadronic energy deposited by hadronic system. And the uh, detector is surrounded by a magnetic uh, field. Okay, so uh, the first time we perform this analysis is in run one. So where we were considering only two channel, the high mass channel and the ZX channel that I have already went through. And since we have like uh, four leptons in the final set, so it's better to label them. And the label we are choosing is like M12, which is the invariant mass of the dilepton that is closer to the Z mass. And M34 is the invariant mass of the other dileptons in the quadruplet. So in the case of quadruplet formed from four electrons or four muons, so it, it may happen that we have like a mispairing. So that's why we define alternate pairings of same flavor opposite signs, leptons, and they are denoted M14 and M23. Oh, so this is uh, the even selections we used in run one, which has like uh, four, uh, three steps. So the first step is the selection, the four uh, L selection step, where we require at least uh, one same flavor of the sign quadruplet. And uh, the leading PT lepton should be higher than 20 GeV, the subleading 15 GeV, and the sub subleading 10 GeV. And uh, uh, three muon is required to be reconstructed by combining uh, um, the, the inner detector and the MS tracks. So for ZX channel, so the best quadruplet is required to have uh, this uh, 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 requirements. And for high mass channel, each lepton should fire at least one trigger. So in the case of multi lepton trigger, all lepton of the trigger must match to lepton in the quadruplet. And then we apply a, a delta R cuts, uh, where uh, it should be um, higher than 1010 for different flavor and 0 0.20 uh, uh, in the quadruplet. 
So, and the second step is where we uh, uh, select, uh, where we rank the quadruplet. So in the ZX, uh, so we select the first surviving quadruplets in the cut flow. And for the high mass, uh, if we have like more than one quadruplet, we choose the one which has, you know, uh, the minimum delta M. And we also then apply a Higgs window cut since you are looking for a Higgs decaying to XX. So we apply this Higgs window cut and then we apply a Z window cut since we don't like, uh, we don't want to have any Z boson because we are looking at Higgs to Z dark, Z dark or Z, Z dark. So we just, you know, cut all events from Z. That's why we apply Z Vito cut. And then we apply a tight signal region cut to be in our signal region. Okay, so uh, for the signal generation, so uh, we uh, so we generate the Higgs boson uh, with Julian Julian fusion mode. And we use MATGRAPH uh, uh, for the event generator and PTI was used uh, for modeling of the pattern shower and the hardenization and underlying events. So for the model parameter epsilon and kappa, I just mentioned, so they are adjust so that only uh, Higgs to ZX to 4L or Higgs to XX to 4L decay were generated. So uh, our dominant backgrounds are Higgs to ZZ star to 4L, the non-resonant standard model ZZ star. And our subdominant backgrounds are WZ, ZZ, GIPSI, Epsilon, TT bar, and Z plus jets. And uh, for the high mass or for Higgs to X, X to 4L, so the estimation is done uh, from a simulation and uh, it's also normalized with theoretical calculation to the cross section. And we also use like data driving method uh, uh, to estimate some uh, uh, um, residual backgrounds. And it's like in the incentives related to the data driving is up to uh, 65 GeV. And the statistical uncertainty is quite small and the systematic uncertainty from the detector and theory are up to 10%. Okay, so this is like uh, the result we got uh, um, from a ZX channel, where uh, the plot on the uh, left-hand side is the M34 distribution. And we can see that, you know, uh, the data and, and the backgrounds are in uh, quite good agreement. And on the uh, uh, right-hand side is uh, the limit at, uh, uh, 95% uh, confidence level uh, set on the delta uh, parameter versus the mass of ZDAC. So in the high mass, so we, we did not have like enough events to uh, have distributions. So we just like put them in, in, in tables. And here you can see that uh, in the four electrons channel where we expected like uh, uh, almost, you know, zero, background you have one events and for muons for 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 me for four muons and two electron two muons uh finally states uh we have zero events observed which is in agreement with uh, the expected background and uh and this is this, this, this corresponds to the mz DAC equals 25 gb because in run one the the signal region cuts with uh, uh, in function of the MZ dark mass. Okay, and then uh, in the case where MZ dark correspond to 20.5 GeV, we also see another events in the four electrons channels, where again, the backgrounds uh, is very, very negligible. And for four muons and two electron two muons, we also see zero events, uh, which correspond to the expected background. So we set limit on kappa for the high mass channel and where you can see these uh, two little bumps here correspond to the extra events we have seen in four electrons uh, channels where MZ DAC is around 20 and MZ DAC is around 25 GeV, which is a bit less than two sigma. Okay, so now uh, uh, we moved uh, from run one to run two for the same analysis, 
where the Higgs production cross section in run two is higher than the one in run two from 43.92 picoban to 19.3 picoban. And where also we expected a higher luminosity uh, uh, from 20.3 to 36. And also some improvement in the analysis code in various level. And also we also expect to have some improvement in the expected limit. So now what's new in run two is like uh, the last row which is the low mass channel. So the low mass channel has been initiated uh, only in the run two analysis, but the high mass and ZX have been already performed in run one, as you just see. And for the labeling, so we still see use the same labeling, M12 and M34 for the dileptonus mass in the quadruplets and M14 and M23 for the alternate, uh, for the alternate pairings. And for the event selection, so maybe, so what's new here is like, you can see that um, the Delta R is not applied for low mass channel. So it's applied for ZX and high mass, but not for low mass channel. It's because in the low mass channels, uh, the lepton are very boosted. So if you wanna separate them with a Delta R cut, will end up like uh, uh, you will lose a lot, lot of efficiency and the statistics, the statistics will be very, very cut. So you will cut a lot of statistics. So that, that's why it's not applied in the low mass channel. And also we also improved um, the signal region cut. So now it's not, it doesn't depend on, um, on MZ DAC anymore, but what we ha what we are using is like uh, this I um, this curves defined by M34 divided by M12 uh, I, I should be higher than like one uh, 0 0.85. I mean, I so otherwise, we still have the Vito cut and you know the Higgs, Higgs window cut and so on. Okay, so for the signal generation, so the same as run one yeah, for high mass in the X channel. And for low mass channel, the Higgs boson was produced using PowerHack and CT10 and LO PDF then replaced by Higgs boson for the 2H DM plus S model. I mean, it's, it's a and uh, for the background, so we still have the same uh, uh, backgrounds for the dominant one and the subdominant one, except that for the subdominant one now, you will have the heavy flavor for low mass region. And for high mass and low mass, we define uh, what we call validation region, just to uh, which is uh, uh, defined it such as it will be orthogonal to the signal region. And for ZX, so the estimation is done from simulation and normalized with theoretical calculation of the cross section. And the uncertainties also on the systematics are this, almost the same. So for ZX channel result in run two, so this is again um, uh, the distribution of M34. And uh, here again, you can see that the data in, in, in black dots are uh, consistent with uh, the backgrounds and the observed and the expected one are very close here. So we have seen some exercises, but not uh, statistically significant. Jalo, could you explain those three peaks in your distribution there? Which one here? The peaks. There is a oh, you mean here? No, 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 on the, the colored. Oh, okay, yeah. So so this is like the uh, signals we we have, uh, you know, uh, we, we choose like some uh, signal samples uh, uh, which are produced uh, according to the model we are using here, which is a, a H -A -H -M model. And we have chosen like three of them here, where the, this red one is a case um, where the signal is MZ DAC is around 15 GeV. And in blue here is a case where MZ DAC is 35 GeV. And in green one is a case where MZ DAC is 55 GeV. So yeah, so this is like uh, 
Yeah, Diallo, yeah. may I, uh, <laughs> Vico? I That's mean, right. you said that there is a consistency between data and Monte Carlo. However, we see that there is a missing normalization. There is no, I mean, you have a discrepancy in some region between data and Monte Carlo. So how could you explain this? Is some yeah, scale so, factor missing or what is? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I think I, th I think they, they are different within an incentives because if you look at the incentives bar, so it's, it's you know, it's, it will be consistent with the, with, with the backgrounds, right? So uh, within I, this, the within within the statistical error, you said. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So Thank yeah, you. and this is the uh, the is uh, the uh, systematic is also included or just... yeah yeah the systematics of everything is 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 included yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so again, here we also uh, uh, put limits on 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 delta versus MZ dark where you can see. So in green is within one systematics okay. and in yellow is within two systematics. And uh, the dashed uh, uh, line is what we expected and the full line is what we observed. And you can see that, uh, you know, they are uh, consistent within uncertainties. Okay, so for the high mass, uh, result in run two so here what we so if you if you remember in run one we just uh, had tables because we did not have like distribution and and now since we change the signal region cut so we can manage to have a, a distribution which is average dilepton mass here and here you can see that you know we also put uh, some signal references mz dac 15 35 GeV and 55 GeV here. And what we can see here is still like some excesses here, around 20 GeV, and here also around 20, 28 GeV here. And this is, you know, uh, more or less what we have seen in run one. So we also have seen these excesses around the same MZ dark range in run two. And yeah, so we also uh, perform the p value of uh, corresponding to this uh, to uh, to these excesses we have seen, and uh, the one which is more significant is like uh, uh, it has like uh, one point nine uh, sigma for as global sigma, and so we still have some excesses, but you know, it's not statistically, again, significant to claim any discovery or anything like that. But we, we, what is interesting is that we, we have seen it in run one, but also in, in run two. And again, we uh, set limits on kappa. So, each, uh, and, and you can still see these excesses we have seen around 20 and 28 GV. Okay, so in low mass channel, uh, so this is a new, this, that was the first time it performed, so in run two. And this is again the average, the average dilepton mass distribution. And the mask you have seen here is a quaternion veto cut we applied here. That's why there is some mask here. And here again, you know, if we apply all the cut flows, we, we don't see any data. And this is also uh, compatible with the total backgrounds. So here we don't see like uh, any, you know, anything really interesting here. So there is no data. And this is also, uh, you know, in accordance to the expected background. And also, we also put limits on the branching ratio, on the uh, um, uh, ratio cross-section of the Higgs to AA and the cross-section of standard model Higgs. And here again, you can see the key veto cut. We put this mask here. Yeah, and this is the type of two and tangent B equals, uh, equals five for the two HDM plus S model. Okay, so this is uh, one plot we produce. This is extra plot. It's not uh, in the paper, but you can find it in the auxiliary materials in run two. And this is uh, on the x uh, axis. We have the M34 
uh, uh, mass and in the M12 is the mass of the leading light leading leading dielectron. And here, what you can see here is like uh, in the full uh, object, like circle or you know upward uh, triangle or downward triangle, it correspond to the um, run two analysis. And and for this case is like uh, run one analysis where it's like empty object. And so what we have seen in run one, which is like this this empty uh, uh, triangle. Is all is very close to what what we have seen in the round, which is this full circle, and this one also is a bit close to this one, and this crossed uh, stuff is the events which fail the Zvito cut. Okay, so Jalo, yeah. can you can you explain uh, that uh, green band? Yeah, so 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 this this green band, if you apply. Uh, our um, signal region cut, which is M34 over M12. So we will have this, this green band. So our analysis, we are only considering uh, the events which fall in this signal region, oh, in this okay. green band, which correspond to our signal region. And now, why don't you have events in the other, in the other uh, triangles? So could you explain the, the full kinematics so people can appreciate what, what's going on? So you mean here? No, no, no. The other side of uh, of, of of the line. I'm sorry. You mean here? No, no, no. The the other area where you have no event at all. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. So it's it's because here. Um. So what we what we what we uh plotting here is like M one two versus M M three four, but we define. M12 in such a way that M12 correspond to the leading dielectrons and M34. What does leading mean? What does leading mean? Diallo, okay, you, are so, using, you, are, you are using uh, <laughs> our okay, jargon. Me... We, some of us understand what, when you mean leading. So okay. But... Okay. Okay. Let, let, me, let me explain then. Okay. So, so for instance, if you have like a Higgs decaying to Z DAC to two Z DAC, so each of them will decay to two leptons. So we take like uh, two of them, we, we name it one, one lepton, two leptons, and we call it M12. And we take the other two leptons and we call it M34. So now the, the, the leptons, uh, so, so we choose M12 and M34 in such a way that M12 is a mass which is closer to the Z mass. So leading directons here means the mass which is closer to the Z mass. And the M34 is uh, like uh, the other dielectron mass. And since we are like uh, always less than the Z mass, so it means M12 will be always higher than M34. So since M12 is higher than M, will be always higher than M34, you will have this, 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 this triangle where you have to always like, uh, um, uh, you, you, you have to uh, always have something which is uh, where M12 is less than M34. So that's why you, you don't have any events here. Because if you have, for instance, events here, it means, for instance, or, or events here, where my mouse is, it means M34 is higher than M12. And this, and this is not possible because the way we choose M12 and M34. Okay, so that's why you have something like, you know, this uh, kinematical shape. Okay, so, yeah, so let me just, okay, so in conclusion, so the search for the light uh, beyond standard model bosons, uh, so I, I have a question, okay, it's just. It's yeah, just man. okay, okay. You just go, yeah. first do your summary, then I ask. <laughs> Oh, so do, do you want to ask some question? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Okay, so the data is mostly consistent with uh, the expected backgrounds. So we put, uh, we set limit on the branching ratio at 95 persons confidence level. And uh, the run one two, uh, the run one paper no, can I, be found in this link. Yeah, and the run two paper can be found also in this, in this link. So now what we are busy busy with is like we are uh, reiterating this analysis in the full run two. 
where we added uh, new channels, you call uh, S to Z duct, Z duct for leptons, where S here is a, a scalar, where uh, um, which has a mass higher or less than the Higgs mass. So we are considering two signal region for this channel, where, where MS is uh, higher than 130 GeV, we call signal region one, and the other one, the other case is MS less than 115 GeV that we call signal region two. And we also are making use of more sensitive uh, variables for this uh, full run two. And also we also uh, worked to improve the background estimation. So this, uh, this, this is already something we, uh, which is already approved uh, by Atlas, but it's not pub publicly, uh, publicly approved. So that's, that's why I was not able to show, to show them to you. But just to let you know that this is like uh, something we are working on and soon it will be public. Yeah, that's all. Thanks for your attention. Diallo, thank you very much. Uh, you gave an expert talk. Um, so some of members of our audience uh, are not in particle physics and they are in other areas. And uh, uh, so now we can invite them to ask questions. So anybody can ask questions here. There are no wrong or right questions. So uh, feel free to, uh, uh, to talk. Uh, so uh, there are some hands that are raised. So let's go to Urish. Well, Urish is a professor and <laughs> an expert in all of these things. So Urish and Farida are professors here uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in particle physics. But I'm talking about people who are connected and but are not. They are not uh, in particle physics. You too, please uh, feel free to speak out and ask any question, and that is fine. So uh, Ulrich. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks, Yalo. Nice to see what you have done in the last week, years, after uh, you have spent some time here in Strasbourg and you're doing your master. So it's the, um, I had several questions. I mean, one more general, you jumped uh, in the beginning very quickly into uh, your analysis uh, in, in you didn't really explain what this uh, dark area is. What your what is a dark for Z compared to a normal Z? It seems to decay in the same way. If I see your from your slides, and but what is really the motivation for these uh, obscure obscurious uh, particles? Why spec particularly these ones are nice and interesting, or why were you drawn to this ones and not to other models and what is really the particularity of this model what is really the physics which is introduced there you just said there's another particle which uh, it's called a z dark and um, but it decays in the same way as a z it seems and so what is the difference why what does it mean a dark z okay yeah so thanks Irish, for your for your nice uh for your nice question. So, yeah, just to remind that you know, when I when I uh, mentioned here that you know, uh, after my you know African School of Physics, I went to Strasbourg and do my my master degree. So it's like because of Irish. So you know, after after the African School of Physics, so we keep in touch and we you know organize stuff to go. In, in Strasbourg and do our masters. And it was not only me, it was like three of us, one from Congo, another one from Madagascar. So thanks again, Ulrich, for your effort. And you know, it will be always recognized. Okay, so now uh, let me just go to your question. Yeah, so uh, so here I, I uh, briefly talk about uh, the motivation of the search of uh, the ZDAC particles. So one of them is like the explanation of astrophysical observation of position excesses. Mm -hmm. And the other one is dark matter search, okay? So as you know, so in the standard model, so we don't really have like uh, any candidates that could explain the dark matter uh, uh, we have seen or we have seen indirectly. 
Okay, so so in so in this uh, benchmark model, it predicts uh, some pseudo scalar that we call A or a Z duck, and these two particles could be candidates to dark matter particles. And so and uh, yeah, so and this um, the two HDM plus S model and the HAHM model, which is a hidden abelian Higgs models from Carton and from also uh, uh, Human, who is at BNL. So they like uh, give a very simple uh, uh, model where, you know, we have like uh, uh, the, 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 the ZDAC uh, particles that can interact with the standard models uh, uh, Higgs through some kinematics uh, uh, mixing parameter. So the main difference between uh, the ZDAC and the Z boson we know, it's the masses. So, but they, 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 they all are bosons with the same spin. So the, the, the only difference is, uh, is uh, the masses. And that's why uh, our main backgrounds here is uh, the Higgs decaying to ZZ star to 4L because the, the Z and the Z are, are very similar and they all, they all are decaying to four leptons. And so the main difference is the masses. And to avoid uh, having a Z instead of a Z dark, what we have done is we apply what we call a Z veto cut. So a Z veto cut is just like uh, to make sure that, you know, if M12 or M34 is around the Z mass, we just discard these events because we don't want it. We, we don't want a Z. And since the only defense are like the masses, this is the only way we can, uh, you know, we can apply or we can use to discard like a Z boson. Sorry, sorry, I mean, you didn't really ask my question. I mean, what is the connection to dark matter? I mean, you said the, the Z dark can be a dark matter candidate. That cannot be true because it decays immediately. Dark matter candidate has to be something which lives comparable long as a universe. So, so, so you, you, you mean what is the link with? Uh, with you, you, you said the Z dark can be a, or the, the A can be a dark matter candidate, but that certainly cannot be the case. Yeah, so I, so we, we uh, I think uh, in our uh, first paper, so this is what we uh, really um, were explaining there. But recently also we have another discussion where we, we, we were saying, maybe Ketevi also can uh, confirm that, where we were saying that maybe we should not say that, you know, ZDAC candidates. Yeah, so, but, so, but, so yellow, okay, yeah. just to expand on what you're saying, basically, right, so we have this standard model, which, you know, explain our ordinary matter, you know, we have electrons, protons, neutrons, quarks, and so forth, you know, we do all kind of physics with that, and then, but then we have an observation of dark matter, which we only have, uh, you know, the, uh, gravitational evidence uh, of it, but we don't know the nature of it. So, so this, this model basically says that, you know, we have the standard model with ordinary particle and then, but on the side, there, there is a dark sector where here dark means we are not sensitive to it. We don't really see it with our instruments, but they are there, they are around, we just don't they don't interact with us, with us very much. So that's the dark sector. Now, the particles that are in that sector, yeah, they are called dark particles. Yeah. So that's where the word dark you know, comes from, that there is another sector out there full of particles that don't interact with us very much. And dark simply means that we are not that much sensitive to them. So in that sector, there could be a collection of other particles. Some of them, some of them will be vector bosons, just like in the standard model, we have the Z um, or the photon, which are bosons and they are vectors, so a spin one object. 
So in the dark sector as well, there could be some particles that carry spin one. So they are also vectors. And in that case, we'll call them dark photons or dark vector bosons. Now, here, the z dark here that Diallo is showing is essentially a dark photon. So that word may sound weird because photon is a particle of light. So why do you say dark photons? It simply means that it's not the ordinary photons in our standard model of particle physics, but it's a photon that is in a different sector, a dark sector that we are not that much sensitive to. Now, why would a dark photon or a dark vector boson decay back into the standard model part? Yeah. That is because of this coupling. Yeah. They don't interact very much, but there is some small feeble interaction through this coupling that we call kinetic mixing. So this is the mixing between the fields of the standard model, uh, uh, the, the uh, electromagnetic field of the standard model, which also the, the dark electromagnetic field of that dark sector. That interaction is denoted by this small coupling here. The coupling has to be very small because we don't see that much interaction anyways. So this parameter has to be kept quite small in the model. You play around with this parameter. Yeah. So that's where they interact. So when they interact through these small couplings, there is a chance that this dark photon or dark vector boson can decay back into standard model particles. And in this particular analysis, we are searching for the case where through this coupling, they decay back into leptons, electrons or muons. Yeah, so that's why we have four of them here. And, uh, and then, so there are four leptons in the system. So we can, we can group them since these two, for example, can be grouped because they are coming from a decay of this thing. And these two, two can be grouped because they are coming from a decay of the other thing. So there are two channels that the yellow is showing here. This is where the Higgs boson of the standard model decay into our standard model uh, particle, and then ultimately a dark photons or a dark vector boson. Then in this one, the one on the right, our Higgs boson decay into two of the dark sector particles, dark photon or a dark vector boson. And then those guys decay back into standard model particle, the four left So that's why we are searching for four leptons. But now when these things decay, they will have different momenta in the decay. So then you can order them lepton one, two, three, and four. And then you can group them, right? Because these, these guys, they are electrically neutral. The leptons are charged, positive and negative, to make something neutral. You can group them such that you conserve the charge and so forth. So one grouping will be the M12 that Diallo is talking about. So if you just do the kinematics and uh, variant mass of these two, it should be consistent with the mass of the object that was decaying before. So that's the M12. If you also take this other one, you just do the uh, you know Lorentz invariant mass of uh, two four momenta objects, you will get another mass which should be consistent with this one. Now, one thing that Diallo didn't tell you is that these two objects, they are the same. So presumably they should have the same mass. So our M12 and M34 should be very, very close in mass. That's why he makes the requirement that if I take M1, M34, and I divide it by M12, it should be greater than 85 because it should be very close to one because it's you have two objects which are decaying. It's the same mass, right? And But we have ordered them such that M12 is always greater than M34. So this ratio has to always be less than one. And, and if we are really seeing the particle that we are searching for, the ratio has to be very, very close to one because it's exactly the same object. There are two Z dogs that are decaying. Yellow, go back to the to that plot. Yeah. Then 
the other thing that the model that we are using is saying is that uh, now since you have a whole new sector full of particles, now the, your, your Feynman diagram, you have a whole new set of full, of full of particles, which is the dark sector. And we also have the standard model on the side. Then there has to be something that gives masses to the, those particles in the dark sector. So, so therefore there is a dark Higgs out there that we have not, we may not have discovered yet. So that dark Higgs is this S here. So that's what is denoted S here. Now, what is interesting is that the dark Higgs and our standard model Higgs, they could mix. And it's through that mixing that this decay is actually possible. Yeah. So then you see that the whole thing is complex. Standard model of particles that ordinary particles that we play with all the time, electromagnetism, nuclear physics, whatever, standard model. That's our stuff. Now we are saying that there is some dark sector out there full of some other particles. And out of that dark sector, there could be a particles that is candidate for dark matter. So that's the punchline. We want to find candidates for dark matter. So we created a model that has a dark sector full of particles such that one of them could be candidate for dark matter, not the dark vector boson. Yeah, just, I think Ulish is right. It's not the dark vector boson or the, 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 the pseudo scalar that is the candidate. But the, in the dark sector, there could be other particles and one of them will be neutral and stable. And that's the one that will be the candidate. We are not studying that one here. We are studying the other particles that will decay back into the standard model. So if you were to discover this, this process, then we'll see that, okay, we are right in our thinking that there is a dark sector. Now we will go now and search for the other, um, the other cases, which uh, we are doing also with Farida and, uh, and Mohammed when we are searching for the Higgs decay into invisible. So that's also, that is looking for the candidate particle that would really be that, that, that could be the dark matter. So that's, that's the story here. So when you are sitting behind your computer and you have that tingling be, you know, behind your back and you feel like something is happening, maybe it's a dark sector particle flying <laughs> around you or yeah. something, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so, you know, so, so that's the story, okay? And yeah, may I, <laughs> may I complete? I mean, not complete. I mean, I, I take your, uh, uh, your, uh, your nice explanation, a key TV, and uh, I, uh, I mean, you have already answered many of uh, the things that I have, I think, to, to address to the yellow. But uh, anyway, there is something to put it really, to put it really easy. I mean, in the two Feynman diagrams in that we have right now in the slide, we have in the final state, I mean, we have a standard model Z, uh, Z boson, and we have the famous Z, Z dark. And the other side, we have two Z dark. Okay, so here, I mean, if you go your final, I mean, your observable is either M12 or three uh, M, I mean, you reconstruct the dilepton in each use, in each scenario. I mean, in, 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 in the scenario in which you have two Z dark. So you are looking in your observable you are scanning, let's say, the two possibility M12 and M34. And in the other size, because I mean, you are, you are considering both scenarios, right? Both scenarios in your analysis. I mean, in the diagram on the, on the left, you have Z dark that will decay to day lepton based on the explanation that Ski TV nicely explained. And the other, I mean, you have standard model Z. So in this case, your final state still the uh, I mean the four lipton, but you are you are I mean you are scanning, you are you are exploring your observable in terms of invariance mass of the uh, of the uh, uh, invariance mass of the dead lipton. So if you could come back, uh, please in the your observable. 
your observable it, it, can you which, which slide yeah. could you the m1 the, and m1 exactly. for me when you are looking when you are searching or looking searching for a new particle so you have to define your observable disease and you, you, you explore your no uh, the other the the invariant mass no, the invariant mass, invariant mass. Uh, m3 the invariant four, mass. Okay. okay, so this is, this is exact, exactly, I mean, you explore, you explore these invariant mass either in the first scenario or the second scenario. First scenario, I mean, the uh, leading, subleading, uh, meaning one, two, or three, four, and, you, and uh, here you scan these, uh, these observable, and you see if you have excess or deficit. This is the uh, standard, uh, let's say, uh, approach, how we, we see, uh, how we can uh, say okay, uh, I mean uh, how we can I mean uh, the, the uh, sorry, the uh, the standard approach to, to look. So my my point here, I mean you use this. I mean you have this find this observable to, to to explore if there is an excess or deficit comparing to the standard matter to to see okay this is my uh, my uh, my z uh, my uh, z dark or pseudo scalar or whatever that decay to to develop that and then you you i mean if there is no because here you see already you have an excess here right mm -hmm. go ahead yeah and then you uh, uh, and then you put limits it, this excess is not is not sufficient. Okay, we, we still we say that we are consistent between standard model and what we're looking for, and you sit limit on the uh, on, on this observable fact. So, what is the limit? I mean, what is the if you could go back please to the slide when you showed the limit in, on your observable, either the first scenario, or second scenario, or here. I mean, what I can learn from this plot okay so what Jello, is the uh, limit yeah. here go go back to the m3 m m3 for yeah, of, uh, of of the of the zx <clears throat> of the zx this the one m3 right for the m34 yeah this is m34 yeah, uh, okay I'm... yeah so 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 i think jalo you went a little bit fast in your explanation so so could you go back to the Feynman diagram for this one Go back to the Feynman diagram for this one, okay? Um, so, all this right. One. So that's the one that is on the left. In this particular case, you have the Higgs boson, which is denoted by the H there, it decays into the standard model Z boson, which is just the Z at the top there, and a dark, Z or a dark photon, which is the ZD there, yeah? So ultimately you expect that one of the dileptons that you have, the invariant mass of that dileptron, let's say the, the, the two leptons at the top there, when you make the invariant mass, so you take the full winter of these things, you compute the invariant mass, it should be consistent with the mass of this Z. And the mass of the Z, we already know what it is. It has been discovered, we measure it, it's 91 GeV or so. So that one we know. Yeah, so, and, uh, and in this configuration, yeah, so just look at the kinematics. The Higgs we discovered, it, it has about 125 GeV. This has 90 GeV. So that means there is about only 30 or 35 GeV left for this Z. Z, Z. So, Ultimately, it means that the M34 that is left over here is the one that is, that's where you should be searching for this uh, dark photon or dark vector boson. So now go back to the M34 distribution. So, yeah, so, so um, just the M34 distribution for the, yeah, this one. So now you are M34 because M12 is the one that is reconstructing the standard model Z for you, you make sure that you see that distribution and so forth. And so since it has been measured, it shouldn't be complicated to find. Now you look at this distribution, this is where you should be finding the dark photon or the dark vector boson in this distribution. So if it did exist, you should see a bump somewhere here in the data over the background. That the data is the point here with the statistical uncertainty. 
And the red dot, the red sharp picky, this is why I asked Diallo to explain it. These are our model. If the dark photon were to have 15 GeV and it exists, we should see a sharp. The data should have been very high here. Since you don't know the mass, you have to search in the entire distribution. And if the dark photon were to have 25 GeV, this is where the bump should have appeared much higher over the data if you were to have 55. Now, why would you have 55? I already told you that we start with 125 GeV. The standard model Z that is uh, in the process has 91 GeV. You should have only about 35 GeV left. But why do we go all the way to 55? That's just because of detector resolution and so forth. That's why you go a little bit higher. Yeah. So, so, so the red are uh, what the data would have looked like if that dark photon or dark vector boson have happened to exist and happened to have a mass around here. And this point here should have been sitting right there, very high. If it did have a mass around here, this point here should have been very high here, huge bump in your data and also and so forth. But we don't see that. Here's the distribution of the data, the, bl the blue, yeah, the blue here at the bottom and the red here are all of the backgrounds that we know about that we have accounted for. So in principle, the data should be consistent if with all of your background put together within statistical uncertainty and systematic uncertainty. So that's basically more or less what we are seeing here. Okay, so that's the situation here. So here is where you put the limit. So now go one forward page 28. So now that's why in doing this limit here, it goes essentially only up to about 25 GeV or so. And what, what is the limit here? Okay. The limit here is that it's the, you know, so the things get complicated. Yellow, the next time you give this talk, try to make sure that you don't give the talk to the experts like us, but you need to water it down for your audience and put more illustrative plots in it. Uh, but it was also my fault that I didn't brief you properly. But the plot that is here is the fact that you have this parameter delta here, which Diallo did not explain to you. Yeah, I, I just explained it like uh, in the very three. Yeah, yeah. In okay. Like in, the, in here, which is a delta mass parameter. That's, that's why. Yeah. So you can explain it. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. it's like the, the mass mixing between the standard model Z bosons mm -hmm. and the Z DAC. So, so uh, I didn't put it like uh, here at epsilon uh, in the Feynman diagram, but it's like the, 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 the mass mixing parameter between Z and the Z DAC. Like just KTV said, the exactly. Z DAC is like the DAC sector and the standard model one. So there, there are two things here for the, the left one. There are two parameters that are important. Yeah, I want there to show here. Yeah. Epsilon, which is the kinetic mixing. So it's the mixing between the electromagnetic fields of the standard model and the dark photon. So that's one mixing. Then there is the max mass mixing between these two. Yeah? The, they will form a doublet and the mix. That mass mixing between these two uh, um, the Z and the Z dark here, as they are here, that's controlled by this parameter delta. So from this measurement, we can constrain two things, epsilon and de delta. So go back to the delta plot there again. So um, yeah, so we do have another limit on the epsilon, which Diallo didn't put in this, in this one. He's showing you only here the limit uh, on, on delta, which is the max mix, mixing. What is important here, this channel is really the only channel in which we can constrain delta. There is nothing else. But there are other measurements where you can constrain epsilon. Okay. So that's yeah, what think, is, that's what is yeah. happening here. Now, Diallo, you should explain properly the kappa parameter coming from the Z, et cetera. Okay. I'll let you go through it. It's your talk. Yeah, so uh, Farida, is it fine? What can we explain for you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so, um, okay, yeah, sorry. Maybe I should like, as KTV said, put more details or not showing like things complicated for this talk. 
Okay, sorry. Yeah, so uh, so so in in this case, like uh, we have uh, like epsilon and, and and delta parameters, and for the high mass channel or the channel where Higgs is decaying to z dark z dark four leptons, here also we have like um, the standard model sector where where there is the Higgs boson, and the dark sector where there is the um, the, the z dark boson or the or the dark photons, and they talk each other between them through the kinem, uh, this uh, uh, um, Higgs mixing parameter we call kappa. And so as we did for um, for uh, the for this channel, Higgs to Z, Z dark, so we also uh, put limits on kappa. And as I said, so kappa is the link between the two sectors, the center of the sectors and the dark sectors. And so, um, let me just uh, where I put kappa. Yeah, and so uh, so so we, we set limit as we did uh, with the X channel uh, using so after you know uh, unblinding or as a, after like uh, looking at the data and to see how how the data looks like compared to what we expected. So what we expected is this, the background. So in blue uh, is uh, the Higgs, uh, is the ZZ star for L's backgrounds. And in red is the Higgs to ZZ star backgrounds, which is our main backgrounds. And here also we choose like uh, some signals points reference. And what we see seen here as XSCs is like uh, this data. Because if you compare this data, which is one, one, one data, and what we expected, which is this backgrounds, is like uh, less than 10 minus to one. So if you, if, you, if you look at the number of events. So that's why we call it excesses, because it's higher than what you have seen. And this is a, the, the case, the, the same for uh, this case, where MZ DAC is around 25, uh, uh, 28 GeV. Here also, if we look at what we what we expected, which is the backgrounds here, is around uh, it's less than ten minus one, and if we look at the data, there is a big uh, yeah, more this or less. Is clear, uh, okay, this is clear, DLO. I mean, I see that the data is. Uh, I mean, okay, really okay. okay. Yeah, so yeah, this so is this clear. is yeah, this is what 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 we call. This is your excess comparing yeah. to the standard model. This is exactly. clear. Okay. okay, so so so, so now, uh, uh, what before we we said like we, we we have discovery or something else, so we just compute the what we call the the p value, which is this 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 plot here. And 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 this plot here is showing that like uh, uh, the highest uh, excesses we we have seen, which is around twenty five GeV, has a global p value of one point nine. So, so yeah, so this is like uh, not statistically enough to claim anything. And then when we set limit then in, in, in Kappa here again, we were expected to see like, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, something uh, very close between what we expected and what we observed. And this is the case for, a, for, for all the range except only uh, this case uh, for around 20, 20 GeV and uh, 28 GeV that we have already seen seen in the dielectron average mass distribution. And the highest one is still this one, which is like uh, around 25, uh, uh, 20 GeV. And, and this is like uh, the local p-value is higher than two sigma, for instance, because the two sigma is a red one, is, is a yellow one. And you can see the the band is on top of the yellow one, so you can say that the the local p value is higher than two sigma, for instance. Okay, Jalo, there are some yeah. questions on the chat. Um, Jawad, you want to ask? Are you? Do you want to ask the question yourself? Whom to? It's uh, Jawad. Oh, oh, Jawad. So is is that is this? No, it's, it's it's not the the same than than Z prime, but I I, I think they 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 are not very close. Each uh, they are not very different from each other. What was the constraint on electric precision data on this? Well, you have to read the question. Yeah, I have to read. Okay. 
So, so what about the constraint from electroweak precision data on this dark vector boson? Uh, since the three level mixing Z, Z dark will affect the oblique parameter S, T, and U. So I don't think to know about the oblique parameters. So, S, T, S, T, okay. And U. Um, yes, um, the electroweak precision measurements, they will constrain the epsilon parameter. So that's, you know, epsilon has uh, already constraints uh, from, uh, you know, uh, uh, drillian processes and, and other measurements and, and many other such as uh, uh, Bell, Baba, and so forth. The, so the, for this analysis, unfortunately, the constraint on epsilon, epsilon, the kinetic mixing parameter is not very strong. Uh, it's not competitive. It doesn't compare to the electroweak precision data. The only place where this channel um, is competitive or is unique is to constrain delta, which you don't get from this other, uh, this, uh, the, electro, uh, 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 the precision electroweak measurements and all the other, other searches. It does give you a constraint on the mass mixing between the Z and the and, and the Z dark, but it doesn't constrain epsilon very well. And the other thing is that uh, this particular case, which Diallo is showing now, where you have two dark photons in the intermediate state, to give you the constraint on the Higgs missing parameter kappa, is also the only channel that gives you that access to the to the mixing between the standard model Higgs and the dark sector Higgs. So that's where the advantages of this search come from, but but uh, it's not a competitive channel for the kinetic mixing. Uh, you you need to look at uh, electro weak precision measurements or other channels that are that are that are being looked at in uh, in other experiments. So to, uh, they, they have better constraints on epsilon. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe Ulrich, you you uh, you have you had a lot of questions. You only asked one or two, so maybe you have more. So uh, okay, yeah, Ulrich. But we, we have also some question in the chat. I just see it now. Let's go to the question to the chat. Let other people ask. Yeah. So so I, David, do you know about the oblique parameters STU? No, I I think uh, I think if. Uh, uh, Jawad uh, can talk, he can explain. Yeah, explain us, maybe. Uh, yeah. Jawad, can you explain us what do you mean by oblique parameter S, T, and U? Okay, so he says, sorry, I couldn't admit because there is some noise. So, but, but I we'll think follow, you can we'll go follow ahead. Follow him. Jawad also was, he was at uh, ASP 2014. He's now a, a professor at uh, Agadir, I believe. Uh, so he's a theorist actually in, uh, in, in particle physics and uh, he, he will be talking here um, in the fall, October or November. So I think, uh, yeah, he's certainly, uh, I, I think we need to hear from him. Uh, Joe, okay. th thanks very much for connecting. <clears throat> It is a question from Yasin in slides. Uh, yeah, in so a... yeah, Yasin El, El, El Ghazali. So can you explain why your MC overestimate data in slide 27 uh, on around 16 GeV? Uh, 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 yeah, around 16 GeV. Yeah, again, I, I, th I think this is like, uh, Consistence of uh, uncertainties, like if you if if you, if you look at the 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 the, the uncertainties bar, and yeah, so otherwise I don't think any any uh, anything critical around sixteen GeV. Well, he's and, talking about yellow. He's talking about this deep here in the data where the where it's uh, the, where the background are somewhat higher. Yeah. I think he's talking this is bin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'm yeah. talking about this point of the this is bin. bin. Yeah, because yeah. what we have here is like uh, the the quaternion, like uh, the the epsilon 
and uh, like uh, Gypsy background is around here, I think. So. Wait, wait, wait. So, Jalo, um, um, okay, the Quaconia is around 10 GB and so forth, right? You are in the high mass here, so you don't have those guys. Yes, yes, we don't have them. So we 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 uh, we have a cut which like you know discard these events. So that's why I think uh, I so but but I don't know. This is like something overestimated. We we need certainties, right? If you look at the the vertical I mean, error bar. I mean the error bars are in fact you should really decompose them in systematic and statistical error bars because they are quite strange. I mean they're not symmetrically, and they are larger in the top and smaller in the bottom. They're not symmetric. Some of them very drastically are symmetric. So I think you really should decompose them into these two components. Oh, yeah, yeah. But we, I think we, 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 we don't have the case where they have decomposed, at least for this, for the distribution. Well, you must have, I mean. Yeah, we do. It's like, program which creates this uh, error bar. So it's yeah, we do, yeah, we do. Yeah, but I, but I mean, this is already published, right? But maybe we, we, we can have it by ourselves, but not in the paper. Mm -hmm. um, other questions? I mean, there was very similar comment I had to, I think it was 29. 29. Around here, maybe. This, this bin? No, 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 page 29. Oh, page 29, sorry. That's why you have very few events. Right, this is uh, Took me a while to understand. So say only one, two, three, four, five, six events distributed over this uh, 50 GeV range, and uh, there's nothing in between. So it's uh, very difficult to to compare. But uh, I don't know if say I mean if you integrate the all the backgrounds, uh, you would get how many events. I mean there's this level of 10 to the minus two, but you have uh, I don't know, 50 bins, so you would have probably also end up with something, the same number of events at what you observed, certainly within your statistic. But, but I, I, I mean, this is it, very difficult. But, but I mean, this, this is like where, where you integrate all over the backgrounds, right? Ah, there it is. Ah. Yeah, so you have like 3.9 and, and 6. So four, 4 compared to 6, so it's, yeah. there's no excess. Yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. That's, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, there's no degree, excess. I mean, range. excess you have when you have more than three sigma. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you should be careful with the. So maybe wording. you should say like uh, two sigma excess is only for theoreticians who look for a bump. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But uh, when you when you do this plots, in fact, with your with your hypot hypothetical uh, mass of fifteen or uh, 35 or 55. I mean, what you I mean you, you must use some uh, parameter for the mixing to get this uh, that much uh, that higher peak. Yes, Diallo, it's, it's the parameter. Use what did you set for the mixing parameters uh, epsilon and uh, and and, and kappa when you were you set some parameters when you oh yeah so I th oh, I, th I also put it in the slide here they are 10 minus four. 10 to the minus four, something like that. Oh, I I I I did not put the the numbers here, but in the in the generation they was like set 10 to the minus four, something like that. Okay, so about 10 times higher than your limit. Yeah. Your limit is about 10 to the minus five, right? Oh uh, no, he didn't have the the limit on epsilon. Uh, epsilon, yeah. epsilon, no. No, the 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 delta. Could you Maybe epsilon is in, in in the backup. Let me just check. Okay. Oh yeah, this here is epsilon, right? Okay. And this is, uh, yeah, this is run to epsilon. Yeah, epsilon is here. For for so, so ZDAC. You, yeah, you, you ZDAC. Said, yeah, the limit of, of epsilon here uh, around 10 to the, you know, uh, minus one or so is not competitive at all. Uh, the electroweak precision measurements are way lower here, uh, somewhere very low. So, and also new searches uh, at, uh, at, at other 
other facilities have more competitive uh, uh, bound on epsilon. Okay, well then that means that then this, the other plot and the mass plot here, you to get these peaks, you put something which is about ten times higher than that huh? to get yeah. these peaks. Yeah, I mean the the setting of uh, of, of uh, epsilon and kappa in the in the um, in the generation is really arbitrary, but is set such that you don't violate already the limits, uh, the more the more competitive limits that are out there. That's why it was set to those values. Okay. Okay, let me just check if you have more questions on the chat. So there is like Fatima Amadou, please, why did you select the green band as, as a signal? So you mean, you mean this green, there is green here. I don't know if is this no, 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 that was this 2D plot. Ah, the 2D plot. That one. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, so um, in the, in the 2D plot, so you know, so we we are looking like for two Z dark particles, which uh, uh, I suppose are expected to be identical in term of mass. So that's why we, uh, we 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 apply the signal region cut to be like M12 over M34, uh, you know, less than 0 0.85. So it's like around one. So if you apply this, this cut, so you will have like this green band. So this green band is equivalent to what we are looking for, which is two Z dark particles identical in term of mass. So yeah, so if you plot it in 2D plane, you, you will have this shape. So I don't know if I answer your question, Fatima, but you can. So, and, and then Jalo explain why the green band is getting fatter as you go to higher masses here in M1. Sorry, say again? The green, the green band, you see how it's thin at the yeah. beginning and then it's progressively getting fatter. It's getting larger. Why is the band, the band getting Yeah, I, I, I think this is related to the width, right? Because if you go to yeah, don't explain it to me. I explain okay. it to your audience. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So yeah. So so this is like uh, related to the width and the detector resolution. So if you if you have like uh, because at some point the 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 width of let me just go back to these slides. Uh, yeah, you can you you can see it for instance uh, here in this. Um, in this uh, signals uh, mass point where MZ DAG is 15, MZ DAG is, is 55 GeV, uh, no, uh, sorry, 15, and this one is 35 GeV, and this one is 55 GeV. So if you look at here, this one is, is fatter than this one, and this one is fatter than this one, and this is related to the vids. So the higher uh, uh, the Z dark mass is, and the higher the the, the, the width is, and this this uh, this uh, shape is the same what you have seen also here in the high mass channel. So here also you can see this uh, you know this is less fat than this one, which is less fat than, than this one. So if you go higher in mass, you you will have higher widths, and this is also what you have seen the same uh, shape you you see here. So this is like this is related to the with the effect. Okay, so let me just. Uh, the yellow, could yeah. you please come back to the yeah, limit where you have two large band in. A... Where? This one. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, no, this is, no, be, before. This one? No, no. Down maybe or down as. This one? this one exactly yeah so uh this one is uh, related to the low mass channel so in low mass channel if you look at here so in in low mass channel this is the limit on the low mass channel okay yeah it's okay, the low mass you. channel yeah 
Okay, so, thank so, you. Yeah, so in the low mass channel, we the, the data is zero, so we don't have anything. And this is like uh, you know the background also is 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 very is very small. Like you know if you if you can look at here, zero point zero six is like the highest level if you uh, consider the systematics. Or yeah, the, this is enhanced as yeah. you look more for high mass, enhance the signal yeah. there rather yeah. than low mass. Okay, thank yeah. you. So that's why also uh, you know the expected and the observed is also the same in the in in, in the limit for high mass. And here we put the mask of the quaconio veto cut, which is the uh, deep psi particles and epsilon particles the cut that we, we don't want that we put here. Yeah. Thank you, very nice. Other questions or comments? So Fatima, slide <coughs> 33. Uh, you, you are ready, uh, you are ready. Yes. Oh yeah, okay, I'm ready. Um, sorry, sorry, I have another question. Yeah. Okay. So for epsilon, does it mean that uh, that ducks interact via the electronic uh, force or something like that? Because as far as I know, dark sector does interact only with the gravitational force. I'm confused. Can you explain a bit what is the physical meaning of uh, epsilon? Epsilon is uh, the mixing parameter between uh, um, the Z is a Z dark particle. So. No, no, no. They, yeah, it's uh, um, it's the mixing parameter between uh, the the uh, dark sector um, uh, electromagnetic uh, hypercharge in the dark sector and in the standard model. So. Essentially, um, you know, if you if you take the the, the, the Feynman diagram, uh, you know, basically what you are seeing is that, uh, you know, the the coupling, the coupling uh, um, alpha or alpha e to put another parameter, slap another parameter uh, in front of that. That is epsilon, so that it makes the coupling very weak because you don't want to have a strong coupling between the two fields. Otherwise, we will have discovered the dark sector already if they are coupling at the same level as the standard model uh, electromagnetic field. So you use yes. the parameter epsilon, <laughs> reduce the coupling significantly so that uh, you don't violate the fact that we don't see the dark sector. So, um, so basically they call it the kinetic mixing between uh, the, um, the, the photon in the dark sector and our ordinary electromagnetic photon. I think that's, question, that's what but... physically epsilon epsilon represents that that weak coupling between the two sectors. Yes. Electromagnetically. Yes. You said weak. Does it interact uh, via weak force? I think dark sector does interact only via gravitational force. So we don't have any weak or electromagnetic force. That's why right. they we have only seen the. The, you know, at the gravitational evidence, we don't really have any other evidence for it. So this is a model to try to suggest, you know, why uh, dark sector is, is not really, uh, you know, uh, ordinarily, ordinarily visible. So, and then to propose a model where we can actually have dark matter in it. So, then what is, what is being suggested as a model is that we have the, dark, the standard model and then we have the dark sector, but to couple them, you have to couple them weakly because we only know of the gravitational evidence. Yeah, so that's where you can do the coupling in many, many different ways. So the, 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 the coupling of the electromagnetic field is, is then very weak coupling, which is, this epsilon here that we're talking about, you have to measure it. We have not, so there are limits that are placed on it. Then you can also have coupling through the Higgs fields themselves because the dark sector itself must have uh, another Higgs that is giving mass to the particles in the dark sector. And then you can see that, okay, there could be a coupling between those two and there could be a coupling between the, the vector states, this, uh, this uh, Z and Z dark as well. And you can even extend the model by adding 
you know, many other things. So if it is a two Higgs doublet model, then you have all of the mixing between the Higgs also. It just it depends on how complex you want to make it or how simple you want to make it. So, um, you know, but you have to, you have to see that because we don't see, we only see gravitational evidence for, for dark matter or dark sector. If this coupling exists, it has to be extremely weak. And uh, that's, people are measuring this epsilon in many different experiments. And, and now uh, you, theoretically, you need to respect the experimental bound, otherwise you are violating data. I see what okay. So if you do some analogy here, uh, so we know the standard model Z boson uh, is the mediator of the weak force. So Z dark is, what is Z dark here? Mediate what? Z dark here is, uh, let's say, right, in the dark sector. So let's say the standard model, in the standard model, we have a photon, right? We have, uh, we have, we have the gauge bosons. Uh, we have the photons, we have the Z, and we have the Ws, the all you know, have different masses and they play different role and so forth. That's our standard model. And we more or less understand that very well through our standard model. Now you see, you see that we find, I would like to postulate that there is a dark sector. So another sector over there, just like the standard model. It also has a bunch of particles in it. It has its own um, electromagnetic interactions and maybe quantum chromodynamic in the dark sector, whatever you want to put on it, in it. It's your model, theoretically. As long as you don't violate any observation, you are free to model whatever you want. So you say, okay, I'm gonna construct a dark sector. And in that dark sector, I'm gonna, you know, I expect to have in it a candidate for dark matter. But of course, I, I cannot just have a dark sector with only one particle. There has to be a bunch of other particles that are interacting. So long as they are not interacting with the standard model is fine because we don't see them. So you construct a model where you have a bunch of these other particles and the dark Z here, uh, as I was explaining before, is the dark photon. Is the photon in the dark sector or is the Z boson in the dark sector? Now in this standard model, we have a difference between the Z and the photon. Photon is massless, yeah, you know, and, and it's the carrier of electromagnetic force. The Z is massive and it's the carrier of the weak force. In the dark sector, you can say, okay, the dark photons or the dark Z here, if it has mass zero, I will call it a dark photon. If it doesn't have mass non-zero, it will be the dark Z. So in the dark sector, this dark Z here doesn't, have, doesn't necessarily have to have zero mass. We have a different range of masses. And in some models, they, they call it the Z prime. Yeah, when you go into the exotic models and you have a Z prime masses of a, a TeV or more, it's exactly basically the same thing. That Z prime is also postulating a sector where you have um, an additional gauge boson that is not a standard model one. It's exactly the same philosophy here, except that in the model that we are looking at, this Z prime, uh, sometimes people call it Z prime, sometimes people call it dark photon, sometimes people call it dark, uh, uh, Z dark. You know, it's basically the same idea, but in our case here, this dark photon here must have masses that is consistent with the kinematics of the Higgs decay of 125 GeV. So you can see here that if the, these are the, the same object, therefore you can only search up to half of the Higgs mass. That's why you see in Diallo plot, Diallo's plot all the way to just 160 uh, uh, GeV. And here for this one, because this is 91, this is 125, then these two guys are bound to be about 35 GeV. That's also what you saw, you see in the in Diallo's plot. So that's the range kinematically allowed where we can search, okay? Um, but yeah, the, the Z dark here could be, is you look in the literature, sometimes it's called Z prime. And depending on the model, this thing can have 
one TV or two TV, whatever model you are looking at. And sometimes it's called that it's photon, fine. and sometimes it's called that set. So again, that's fine in X and Gauss theories, right? That's right. Yeah, it's it's exactly the same thing. You you are extending the standard model by by a different sectors where you have a Z prime. But in our model here, we cannot have this Z prime to be a TV because it's bound by the kinematics of 125 GeV Higgs. So, then, so therefore this can only go up to 60 GeV here. Yeah, and in this particular model is simply called Z dark. In other places you find you, the same object is called dark photon. Okay. But it's all the same idea that uh, you have a sector where you, in which you have uh, an extended, uh, an extended sector with uh, a vector boson in it, and you can call it z, uh, uh, z prime depending on which model you have. Uh, here is called z dark, or you can call it dark photon. Thank you. So you see, uh, Diallo, go back to that plot that you are showing now. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, you see this plot here, this epsilon, which is the, that kinetic mixing uh, parameter um, um, between uh, the, 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 the true electromagnetic forces um, in uh, the dark sector and also in the standard model, which is controlled by epsilon here. Uh, this is, the what you see here are the exclusion by many different um, analyses. Yeah, these are the exclusion by many different analyses um, as a function of the mass of uh, of uh, the of the z dark, z -dark. Or the z prime or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so you can see the region that are excluded by many other parameters. And you see on top over here, that's where you begin to see uh, the LHC experiments or that CMS result there, but that's not coming from, I'm not sure exactly where that CMS result is coming from. But uh, if you were to superimpose the epsilon limit from Diallo's analysis, it's not competitive. You won't see it on this plot. It's still, uh, yeah, they, he show you one, uh, 10 to the minus one, which means that it will yeah. be, it will be on, at the top here. Yeah. So you can see that all of these other experiments are a lot more competitive because they have excluded all the way down to, down to the three or sometimes in some areas even more, okay? But 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 I, but I think if you, where we are looking here is like uh, the prompt ZDAG one. And maybe we, we also plan to look at for like long lived particles correspond to the no prompt Z dark in, in the that's next right. iteration. That's, uh, that's, that, that could be, that's what uh, maybe Zainab is going to look at. Zainab, you are not talking very much. Yeah. <laughs> you, or you haven't said anything. So Zainab is also gonna work on this analysis. So maybe she will look at uh, the non prompt, uh, the long lived Z dark, which will fall into this region. So that's why I was saying before that uh, um, Diallo, this particular analysis uh, is only sensitive to the to the mass mixing between the yeah. um, the standard model Z and the Z dark, which is give us that parameter delta. That's uh, so. So Diallo, okay, that's very good. Thanks, thank you for um, for preparing this. And uh, I think what well, suggestion that I will have for you is that next time, uh, um, you know, um, give prepare the talk uh, as a function of the audience that you expect. Okay. Um, well, it's um, next week um, we're going to have Atifa from uh, Morocco, Mohamed Premier. She was here before, I think she's disconnected now. And now uh, uh, she will talk to us about cosmology.
Okay. Atifa, yes, you are here. I see you. Um, how are you doing? So is there any other question? Can I stop sharing? Yeah. We have, we have. Yeah. I, I wanted to see if I can, if I, if I is hearing us. Hi, this is me, Haifa. Hi, hi. Uh, just to thank you, uh, Diallo, for this uh, nice presentation. The overall uh, analysis is clear and very nice. Thank you. I did not want to bother you with detailed question, but uh, we we'll discuss it over coffee, yet, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank All you. Right, nice so, talk. But I'm um, keeping an eye on the questions, so uh, to understand what quite what kind of questions I can get when I would present. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Haifa will present also later in uh, in in, uh, in October. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's very important for this type of seminar that you always do a introduction to the subject because uh, exactly. yeah. otherwise people are lost. I mean, uh, exactly, people, yeah. Because the idea is really to communicate to a large, to very different people from very different fields. So exactly, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's really important. So for the next person, so if you hear about cosmology, one should at least have a short introduction to the big bang yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly so uh atifa is here atifa you hear us i'm not sure if she's hearing us but uh she will be talking next week yes yes atifa okay she heard and she said yes so okay. yes hello hi mm -hmm. atifa how are you hi everyone i'm good it was a nice talk and uh, uh the coming week, uh, I will give you a talk uh, about cosmology and the Higgs field in cosmology. So I, yeah. <laughs> I hope you will attend and uh, like the talk. Very good, very good. All right, so I think we have discussed uh, quite a bit and thanks a lot for your participation. If other people, uh, if you have some other question, uh, you know, you can send it to Diallo. Uh, uh, so Diallo has been doing a lot of work in the analysis right now. He's extremely busy, and but he's doing a really fantastic job. Um, and 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 you know these sort of talks, we want to get ourselves into the the modes of ASP alumni giving talks, and just like Ulrich is saying. You always need to look at your audience, the people that you are going to be talking to, and make sure that uh, you tailor your talk to your audience. Uh, I think Diallo, your talk is very nice. It is just uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> we in the in the in the uh, uh, in the field that who already have a lot of background and so forth. And uh, but you see that it generated a lot of discussion, which is also very good. So um, it was it was it was it was all good. Okay. All right, so I have to leave. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's stop now, and uh, we'll hear from uh, Atifa next week. Thanks everybody for your participation. Uri, Thank thanks you. a bye lot bye. for for, for okay. joining us. Thank you. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.